Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to this session on Principles of Management. I am Dr. Shikha N. Khera and I will be taking up this course for you people. This is the very first session of Principles of Management which is titled as Introduction to Management. Have you ever wondered that what kind of phenomenon, concept or discipline management is? Is it something like drawing? where you keep on scribbling on the piece of paper and you learn at the end of the day. No, my dear friends, it isn't like that. In order to get acumen in the management field, you need to stretch yourself in certain situations so that you learn and grow in this field. So before we begin with the session, I would like to highlight an inspirational story to you people of a leading manager leader of Reliance Industries Limited, Mr. Mukesh Ambani. And then we proceed with the conceptual clarity of the content of this particular course. Mr. Mukesh Ambani is the Chairman and Managing Director of Reliance Industries Limited, the flagship company of Reliance Group. And as a result of Mr. Mukesh's effective leadership and path-breaking management practices, Reliance has now become the largest private sector enterprise in India and also features in the Fortune 500 list of companies. It has a turnover of nearly 66.8 billion US dollars. Mr. Mukesh strongly believes that growth is a way of life for an enterprise and that it has to grow at all times. Mr. Mukesh's unique formula for management includes establishment of an open system of management through the introduction of standard operating procedure. So the first thing we highlight here is the standard operating procedure. Then further, he also focused on the standard operating conditions for any enterprise. Adopting a disruptive style of management as against the feudal style to easily meet the future challenges. He also focused on having the management of good talent in the organization and he always demanded excellence and aiming for the best in everything. Diligence and foresight is planning and challenging the limits and never accepting the defeat. So the success story of Mr. Ambani is a proof that bold and innovative practices of managers can make a momentous difference to the fortunes of the organization. So the term here is innovative practices. We shall be dealing with all these concepts during these sessions. Keeping the accomplishments of top manager in the background, let us now learn the basics of management in this session. Every organization requires talented and committed managers to ensure success and stability in the business operations. Why do we focus on the talented and committed managers? The ultimate aim of any organization is to have profit making. This can only be by achieving something called as competitive advantage. And how do we reach to this scenario of competitive advantage? If only we have something unique with us. And what is this unique resource that we have is the talented and committed employee for the or the manager who is highly talented and committed. So managers needed to design, develop and maintain an organizational environment that encourages both individual and group performance and focuses on something called as cooperation. Cooperation which is called as essence of management. Without cooperating with each other, team members cannot achieve the desired goal. 
managers also provide good leadership and definite direction to their subordinates which enables them to fulfill the goals of the organization. Thus, every organization whether big or small, public or private, profit or service oriented should have managers to manage its operations and managers usually perform either at higher, middle or lower level of the organization. What the manager do as a part of their job is usually known as management. Now if I may ask you students, do you agree to it that management begins at home? Yes, of course, management begins at home and we all have to manage our daily course and affairs in a synchronized manner in order to have the final output or desired results within the given resources and that too we have to make sure that the optimum utilization of resources also takes place. All managers perform certain management functions for effectively coordinating, supervising the activities which they have entrusted in their subordinates. So one of the major areas where the manager has to focus upon is to supervise the directions that he or she has given to his subordinate. These fundamental management functions include planning, organizing, staffing, leading and controlling which we would be discussing in detail. To be successful in their work, managers need to possess different managerial skills such as leadership skills, team building skills, communication skills and motivational skills. If I may say I started off by narrating an incident or a phenomenon that you learn drawing by scribbling again and again. So the same thing applies if you want to have a higher acumen in your managerial skills, you have to update yourself with respect to skills pertaining to leadership styles, communication style, managerial and administrative activities, etc. However, the skills and attributes required for effective management and goal accomplishment must be updated and upgraded constantly. So these are again two important phenomena which one must focus upon that is continuous learning. Continuous skill development, continuous learning leads to growth and success of the manager eventually lands up for organizational effectiveness. So this is because managers have to work in a constantly changing environment characterized by rising competition, changing technologies and assertive workforce. So these are the three important aspects that any manager has to focus upon when he or she is making decisions for tomorrow. He has to look into it that what kind of competitive forces are around him. He has to also focus upon the workforce, its diversity, the level and acumen of the workforce and also he has to focus upon the technological changes which are taking place around him. Moving further, the primary purpose of any management is to create an internal environment which is suitable for the members of the organization so that they perform their jobs efficiently and effectively. So here we want to focus upon that harmony and collaboration and cooperation amongst the internal customers of the organization is highly solicited. Unless we provide that environment to them, there are greater chances that the employee is not able to showcase its highest of potential. The internal environment is normally made up of factors such as organization including organization culture, structure and control system. So with respect to when we talk about internal employees, we have to see to it that they are well placed in the structure of the organization, they are rightly controlled by the organization and they have right set of cultural values within the organization. The internal environment so developed by management may enable or disable its efforts to accomplish the goals of the firms. So that means this internal environment becomes one of the critical factors 
which leads to success of the organizational goal achievement. An enabling environment would help managers to create surplus in their operations so which is going to be a very positive thing while a disabling environment could become an obstacle in achieving the success so we have to reduce this disabling environment and we have to inculcate and develop the enabling environment in the organization certainly the surplus of or deficit arising out of resource mobilization and utilization by an organization is an indicator of managerial efficiency. So, efficiency is something that we have to add on or keep on increasing in the organizational settings. Now, let us formally move on to definitions of the management. Management is the process of planning, organizing, leading, controlling, the work of the organizational members and of using all available organizational resources so as to reach to the stated goals of the organization according to James A. Stoner et al. According to Stephen P. Robbins, management involves coordinating and overseeing the work activities of others so that their activities are completed efficiently and effectively. In simple terms, we may define management as a process concerned with the effective utilization of human and physical resources for attaining organizational and individual goals through a facilitating environment. So, if you now break down the definition of management, you may see that we have to go for effective utilization of both resources both human as well as physical and along with that we need to create a facilitating environment so that we reach to the desired goals. So, thus we may say that management is an art of getting things done. So, this is one of the crucial things that you need to understand that we have to as a managers in organization get the things done by others that is management and that is an art or that is a experiential learning or that is something that you gain out of your observations also. Moving further let us now understand the characteristics of management characteristics of management include so what are basically characteristics of any phenomena characteristics are the basic features of that phenomena how that phenomena performs or works so management is a process that is the first thing we have to discuss upon when do we call any phenomena a process we call any phenomena a process when it has a series of steps within it and these series of steps may be they are conducted one after the other or they may be carried out one in maybe not in one after the other series as well maybe not in a particular order as such but when the manager requires these steps may be conducted. So, management as a process involves these activities and it involves performance of certain functions and activities like planning, organizing, staffing, directing and controlling. Second characteristic is that management is a decision making activity. So, management is a decision making activity as it often involves the evaluation of available alternatives to deal with specific problems and selection of the best alternative to resolve them. So, when do we say any activity as decision making? Here the manager has multiple alternatives in front of him when he has to choose maybe he has to make a decision that he has to allocate resource to the subordinates. 
So under that category also, the manager has to look into that which resources more required or essentially required by a particular subordinate and which resource need to be delegated or allocated to the other subordinate. So that is a decision making. Decision making is not only operative in nature, that may be at times strategic in nature. And what do we understand by strategic decision making by a manager? When the manager has to decide upon the broader vision of the organization, when he has to focus on where the organizational steering wheel has to be taken, which direction to be followed, what kind of strategic move the organization needs to take up, like either it is expansion, growth, focus, niche strategy or maybe a low cost strategy. So these are all decisions that a manager has to take. So management is a decision making activity. Management involves the effective integration and utilization of both physical and human resources. This we have already discussed. So here we need to see that the thrust of management is on efficient management of human resources more because if we are able to manage the human resources well, the other resources will fall into the place automatically. So it will create having an effective management of human resources will have a cascading effect on the management of other resources as well. Further. <coughs> Let us discuss something about the nature of management. An intangible force. Management is an intangible force. Now, what do we understand by the term intangible force? So, an intangible force is that can only be felt but cannot be physically seen. The intangible force is felt when the goal achievement is as per the desired standards. So when you assign a task to your subordinate and you give him the resources as well and by the end of the timeline or the schedule when he is supposed to or she is supposed to give you the uh, desired output, he or she is able to perform well. You cannot say that the management phenomena was visible but it enacted. It could be only felt that the subordinate planned the activities, organized the activities, performed and executed the activities and completed the task. Next is management is a goal oriented process. When do we say any content as a goal oriented process? When we have a target to reach and management always begins with what is to be done. When we know what is to be done that is we know the goal then only we move ahead with identifying the path to reach to that particular place. So the goal or it is a goal oriented process as accomplishment of goals is the primary consideration in determining the activities of the manager. Management has universal application. What does the term universal application mean? Universal application means that this phenomena is applied to every phenomenon or every other concept that exists. This is applied to all the natural phenomena that take place around you. This is also applied to all man-made phenomena that are around us. This is also applied to any institution, to family, to religious places and to the organization as well. So the concept of management is something which has a omnipresence or a universal application. So it is universally applicable in every form, size and nature of the organization. It requires management to manage its affairs. And management has same application to organizations irrespective of their functions. So whether the management is, whether the organization is from sports, hospitality, banking sector or any other industrial setup like automotive or information technology, 
management is applied in all institutions or organizations thus we call it as a universal application of management next nature of management is that it is a system of authority when do we say something as authority when we have a hierarchical structure hierarchical structure gives authority as well as responsibility to the individual an organization is governed by the organization structure an organization structure is in the form of hierarchical method or hierarchical system and this system of hierarchy gives us the benefit of finding out the reporting relationships between the individuals thus we say that management is a system of authority further management is a dynamic process it is a dynamic activity because it is performed continuously in the organization it gets influenced by changes in the environment thus shapes and reshapes itself now what do we mean by this that it shapes and reshapes itself and it is a dynamic process because of the external influences that is through technological changes demographic changes or maybe any other environmental factors political factors which are affecting the organizational functioning that enables the organization to reshape itself in a pattern which is in congruence with the kind of changes which are occurring around the organization or influencing the organizational functioning thus we call it as a dynamic process next nature of management is that it is a multidisciplinary subject what is multidisciplinary subject multidisciplinary subject means that this particular discipline has the content from various other different disciplines likewise in management we may have content from operations supply chain human resources psychology sociology may be anthropology also and certain other contents from different disciplines like statistics mathematics financial background or maybe marketing so thus management is called as a multidisciplinary subject further let us try to find out why or with which what all objectives the discipline of management came into existence so it says like to constantly attempt to accomplish the predetermined performance and productivity goals of the firm management is aimed at it is further aimed at to develop an environment that facilitates the minimum use of physical and human resources to achieve maximum output so the focus here is that we have to utilize the resources to the minimum possible and we have to give the maximum output and here is where we reach to the highest of efficiency to build mutually beneficial relationship between employees and employers so this particular content is highly required because unless there is harmony there will be non cooperation amongst the two parties further the objective of management states to provide stability and growth to the operations of the organization through consistent innovations and quality enhancement initiatives so as a manager students tomorrow you have to focus on giving a creative culture or a platform for increasing the innovative pattern or innovations in the organization and reaching to those heights with the help of innovative measures which lead to quality enhancement initiatives further to work continuously towards the betterment of society by satisfying the organizational social responsibilities in efficient and fair manner so as we live in society we have to give back to the society as well we have already taken lot of resources maybe natural or man made 
services from the society people so in turn an organization needs to return the same back to the society so that is also another important objectives of the field management moving further so there is a debate which says is management a science or an art this question has given rise to a lot of discussions among management experts and practitioners due to its inherent characteristics management experts find it difficult to decide conclusively whether management is a science or an art in this regard a few experts claim management as a science while a few others argue that it is an art so let us discuss both the point of views if we go by management as a science so it is supported by the statement that it is a systematic body of knowledge information gathered in the management field is objective in nature so that means it is rational it has rationale and it has facts attached to it statistical analysis of information may be carried out as in the case of scientific field and adopt scientific methods to solve reoccurring managerial problems so that means scientific methods are also involved in the process of management so this supports that management is a science while the other point of view says managers ability experience wisdom and expertise to take the effective decisions is nothing but an art it is that art that intuitive behavior or that heuristics that he uses for decision making so that the effectiveness is achieved and that never comes out or in case of an art it doesn't come out with the help of any rationale rather it comes out because of his experience wisdom and expertise managers often use their instincts and insights for decision making so these two characteristics of having instincts and insights for decision making supports the phenomena that management is an art so we have seen both the point of views management as a science as well as an art now students it is up to you to spare some time and look into the literature and try to find out the supportive literature which tells us the historical events which actually tell us that we have scientific methods associated with management or do we have more of creative instinct attached to management now another important point to be discussed as management students you need to learn what is the difference between two terms that is management and administration on the face of it it seems that both look alike but there is a thin line difference that we need to understand how these two terms differ from each other let's have a detailed discussion on management versus administration so the difference between management and administration are this are a topic of discussion amongst various management experts different experts view the role and relevance of these concepts in different ways for instance a few management writers consider management and administration as identical concepts according to them these two are basically similar terms even if there are a few subtle differences between them like in dictionaries they have little or no relevance in the real world of business but a majority of management experts view administration and management as two dissimilar concepts with meaningful differences in their characteristics so british and american experts hold different views regarding the relative importance of these two concepts we shall now briefly analyze 
their point of views. British management experts view administration as a part of management. According to them, management in totality is wider than administration. So here they are focusing on that administration is a smaller term while management is the broader one. They believe that management is a broad term as it includes activities like planning, organizing, leading and controlling besides enterprise promotion activities. On the contrary, administration involves just goal setting and policy making activities alone. So moreover, administration can resolve problems or issues affecting the organization just within the broad framework set by the management. Finally, administrative activities are carried out at the top level only, whereas managerial activities pervade through the entire organization. Management expert Robert Heller observed that the difference between management and administration is the difference between choice and rigidity. As we all understand that choice is where creative behavior can be inculcated while rigidity is where strict rules and regulations have to be followed as in the case of bureaucratic organizations. So that is how the British viewpoint developed. However, American management experts generally do not concur with the views of British management experts. In their opinion, administration is a broader term than the management in many aspects. Administration involves objective formulating and policy making activities, while management's aimed at shaping goals and procedures for accomplishing those activities. All functions of management must therefore be confined to broad policies laid down by the administration. Further, the key activities performed at the administrative levels are planning and organizing. So what we can conclude out of this is that management is basically the executive function while administration is the de determinative function. So determinative function means that here the strategy or the vision has to be developed. Executive function means the implementation of those has to be taken. Largely management is concerned with implementation of decision while the scope of administration is wiser and it governs the entire system. The scope of management is comparatively only limited to any subsystem. So what does it mean? This means that if a person is a manager of one particular unit that is financial manager, marketing manager, operative manager, so he will be taking care of that subsystem in the organization. On the contrary, the administrator will be taking care of the organization at whole. The objectives and policies are formulated by the administration while the, it is the usually the top level activity which is done by the top management. On the other hand, management is generally done by the middle level supervisory people which are above the non-managerial level. Further, differences add on, technical skills are vital for successful management while conceptual skills are the key for successful administration. We shall be discussing with these conceptual and technical skills in a while. It usually consists of people who are professionals in their area of operations and are employed by the organization. So this is the major difference here. While administration consists of people who act on behalf of the capital holders or owners of the enterprise. So here they are the promoters and here they are the employees. In management activities are largely influenced by internal factors like organization, environment and culture. While 
The term administration frequently associated with non-business enterprises like educational, military, government institutions and planning and organizing are the essential functions for administering the organizational affairs. So I hope students by now you must have understood the basic difference or the fundamental differential between the terms management and administration. One has more of a strategic wider view, the other term management has more of subsystem management or executive implementation phase. Okay. Now coming on to what you are going to be tomorrow. The budding managers who are right now listening to me and trying to understand this concept of management, who are managers? This is what we need to tackle now that how do they differ from leadership and what are the basic fundamental features of an individual to be a manager. It used to be fairly simple to define who managers were. They were the organizational members who told others what to do how to do and it was easy to differentiate managers from non-managerial employees. Now it is not quite that simple. This is what used to be in earlier days. In many organizations in today's time, the changing nature of work has blurred the distinction between managers and non-managerial employees. Many traditional non-managerial jobs now include managerial activities. For example, let us take a company General Cable Corporation's facility in Canada where managerial responsibilities are shared by managers and team members both. Most of the employees are cross-trained and multi-skilled. So here we are talking about terms like cross-trained and multi-skilled. So these are things these are the characteristics which a manager need to have. Within a single shift, an employee can be a team leader, equipment operator, maintenance technician, quality inspector or improvement planner. So they can take up multiple roles. So how we define who is a manager? A manager is someone who coordinates and oversees the work of other people so that organizational goal can be accomplished and a manager's job is not about personal achievements it is about helping others to get the work done so this is where we started off that management is to get the work done by others that may mean coordinating the work of departmental group or it may mean supervising the activities of a single person as well it can also involve coordinating the work activities of team with people from different departments or even people outside the organization such as you may have temporary employees or individuals who work for organization suppliers. Keep in mind also that managers may have work duties not related to coordinating and overseeing others work. For example, an insurance claim supervisor might process claims in addition to coordinating the work activities of other claim clerks as well. So there, there can be chances where a particular manager is also going an extra mile and doing a little more activities than what he is assigned with. So is there a way to classify managers in the organization? Yes. In traditional structured organizations which are often pictured as a pyramid because more employees are at lower organization levels than at upper levels, managers can be classified as first line managers, middle managers or the top managers. Let us now try to understand these three levels of management. The first level is top management, middle management and frontline management. All managers perform certain administrative roles that is decision making and managerial role that is execution. So we have to first find out that what is the role assigned to the manager. Based on that we can give him the designations. So when it comes to top management and middle management decision making 
and when it comes to front line and middle management execution of those decisions they take place however the extent of each role performed by these managers usually depends on their position in the management the authority and responsibility of a job is also determined by the location of the job in the managerial hierarchy so the time and effort spent on managerial functions differ from level to level typically as you may see on the screen the management of organization is classified into three categories so the top manager is the one who operates from the highest level of the organization and are usually called the top managers these managers are generally few in number but vested with enormous powers so what are the power students top managers that have top managers have the power to decide upon what is the direction of organization be like in future what are the competitive forces how much is the market share you wish to earn what is the profitability you want to plan what is the new location you want to open your pure plant at or how many new employees you want to recruit all these critical decisions or the more important decisions are taken by the enormous powers that the top management has top managers are entrusted with overall responsibility of managing the whole organization they make organization wide decisions with long term implications for the survival and growth of the firm so they have to take such decisions which are for long term in nature they are even empowered to take decisions to give new directions for the organization and these managers will usually spend more time in planning and directing rather less time in controlling activities since they are directly dealing with the directional of the organization the directional move of the organization the middle management moves ahead and does the part of controlling they determine the top management they determine the nature of relationship between the organization and its external environment they also guide the firm's interaction with external individuals and institutions so positions like chief executive officer president in an organization vice president or a managing director chief financial officer and coo are usually regarded as the constituents of top management of an organization let us now try to understand the middle management managers belonging to this category fall between the top management and the front line management they receive so their major part is to receive orders receive goals orders and directions from the top management and implement them through front line managers in this regard each middle manager supervises a number of front line managers normally within the related fields managers at this level generally distribute their time fairly equally among the various functions like planning organizing and controlling these middle managers transmit the organizational goals to the front line managers and then give them directions coordinate with them and control their efforts towards the accomplishments so in one way we can say the middle management task is to coordinate control and direct the work to be done by the front line managers middle managers are more interested in near future plan and these activities are done accordingly now if you may recall during the top management discussion we discussed that they are more towards planning the long term plans of the organization on the contrary the middle management is planning towards the near future move of the organization here they set short term goals for their subordinates which finally lead to the achievement of long term objectives of the firm 
middle managers usually deal with the semi structured or structured problems of the firms positions like regional heads divisional heads and project leaders are assigned to the middle level managers in the organization now let us discuss about the frontline managers they are usually positioned at the bottom of the managerial hierarchy and they serve as a liaison between the management and the workers the primary responsibility of frontline manager is to execute the goals and plans entrusted to them by the middle management so here they are a liaison between the top management and the workers so that is between these two parties the front line manager takes the role these managers direct the activities of the workers and get the organizational goals achieved through them they normally spend more time and effort on controlling and less time in planning so here you can see as we are moving down in the hierarchy the nature of work is continuously changing from making the strategy or the vision or giving the orders now we have reached to the stage where the workers that is the front line managers are focusing more towards execution and controlling of the orders or the performance they are primarily concerned of accomplishing the day to day or routine organizational activities such as manufacturing of goods and delivery of services front line managers are also responsible for motivating the employees work persuading them and observe the rules and regulations relating to the safety and health of the workers they deal with structured problems resolve them by applying guidelines and policy and prescribe as prescribed by the higher level management these managers are usually known by titles such as supervisors line managers operational managers sectional and departmental heads office managers and shift managers now let us discuss something about managerial skills for success what are managerial priority skills so there are three major skills that a manager needs to possess depending upon their levels as well so these are conceptual skills technical skills and human skills let us now deliberate on these three kinds of skills their importance and to which level they belong in terms of the magnitude of the skill let's start with the technical skill a technical skill is the ability to properly perform a specific job of specialized nature the ability wherein the person has specialized expertise <coughs> organizations expect their managers to possess a set of technical skills necessary to perform their jobs efficiently technical skill does not refer to any high technological skills instead it refers to one's knowledge of the job and expertise in job specific techniques and procedures moving on to the second category of skill that is human skills human skill is the ability to work with understand and motivate other people both individually as well as in a group the third category of skill is the conceptual skill that is the mental ability to analyze and diagnose the complex problems and situations apart from technical skill human skill and conceptual skill we have further three more skills that are essentially required by a manager so these include political skill diagnostic skill and digital skill let us try to understand these three skills now political skills are useful for managers to gain knowledge of others at work and use the same to influence their behavior such that the organization and individual goals are 
accomplished. So when we talk about that a manager needs to possess a political skill, so that means he should have the ability to create an impact on an individual's thought process, to influence the behavior of individual, modify the behavior of that individual who primarily may be the subordinate of that manager so as to get the desired results. The second skill is diagnostic skill. These are helpful for managers in effectively choosing the best course of action for accomplishing the goal. Diagnostic or analytical skills, they help the manager in better understanding the cause effect relationship and also the problem solving process. As we have already discussed students that a manager has to continuously go for decision making. Now this decision making can only be appropriate if the diagnostic skill of the manager is in place. That is, he has the ability to analyze, to find out the rationale and to do the fact check and after this analysis is able to come up in a scientific manner the right kind of solution for that problem. The third skill is the digital skill. Digital skills are essential nowadays for managers to make well informed decisions in the modern electronic environment. Paul Glister defines digital skill or literacy as the ability to understand and use the information in multiple formats from a wide range of sources when it is presented via computers. So what do we want to infer here? Right now also you are able to listen to this session because of the digital skills only. So tomorrow again when you think of joining an organization as a manager, it is a much required skill in today's time that you upskill yourself in all the related digital skills pertaining to your subsystem area. Now let us deliberate upon two points. We have already discussed the level of management. If you may recall, we have discussed about the level of management in terms of the pyramid where on the top it was top management, then it was middle management and then it was frontline management. So this was the pyramid of level of management. We have already discussed the three skills, technical, human and conceptual skill. Let us now try to see that what is the magnitude of these skills related to each level. As you can see in this graphic, top management with respect to technical skill is required to have some information about it. But the most information on technical skill is expected from the lower management while the middle management needs to have a fair idea about the technical skill to carry out their work. When it comes to conceptual skill, the top management needs to have the most conceptual skill. Why so? As we have discussed, it helps them to have a problem solving acumen and a decision making ability. The middle management will have moderately fair amount of conceptual skills while the lower management is expected to have the least of all amongst the three levels. One interesting thing students I think you can observe is the human skills. These human skills are all same in magnitude at all level. Can you people answer why? Yes, you can answer it very well and I am sure you people must be knowing the appropriate answer to it. But let me just put those into words. Human skill is something which relates to high amount of emotional balance, emotional intelligence, empathy and compassion. After all, a manager, worker, subordinate or a top manager, everyone is a human being. And as a result, we need to see that how much compassionate or emotionally intelligent and balanced managers we are. So we have to have 
equal amount of human skill at all level by all people irrespective of the amount of conceptual or technical skill we possess or irrespective of the level in the hierarchy where we are placed in organization. So students it is requested and required that kindly make sure that while you move ahead in your career you are focusing highly on developing your human skill. Now where do managers work? Managers work at a place which is called as an organization. Now what is an organization? An organization is a group of people who join hands to accomplish some specific purposes. And what are the characteristics of the organization? Characteristics include every organization has a goal, be it a sports organization or a hospital. Every organization has a structure, be it a university or be it an IT sector. Every organization deals with people, both internal and external customers. So these are the common characteristics with which the manager has to deal with. So the manager has to deal with these three parameters and work towards achievement of the goal, has to maintain the hierarchy levels in the structure and deal compassionately with both internal and the external customers. Now why are managers important? They are important because organizations need their managerial skills and ability. Why organization need their managerial skill and ability? Because of the uncertain, complex and chaotic environment in which the organization is functioning, the organization requires those skills which the manager possess to deal with these uncertain situations. Skills and ability as a manager have been very crucial in guiding the organization through the challenging times. The managers are highly critical in getting the things done, thus they are required by the organization. Manager's ability is important in creating organizational value, which is the essence of organizational existence and the single most important variable in employee productivity and loyalty is not pay or bonus. This is very surprising or workplace environment. It is the quality of relationship between employee and their direct supervisor. So these are the things that make the importance of manager at a workplace and why is he desired or why we need to study management and execute the management processes. Now there are two concepts which I will be quickly focusing upon efficiency and effectiveness. So management relies on these two terms. First is goal attainment which is called as effectiveness that is we are able to attain what we started off with. So we are able to find out where we have to reach and the second is resource utilization and low wastage which is called as efficiency. So now how we define management? Management is art of getting things done through others in an efficient and effective manner. So this is students you have to learn this that management is art of getting things done through others in efficient and effective manner. Now moving on to behaviors for effective management, how tomorrow you have to behave in organizations to get effective management, initiate and implement change which is important we must be at the pace with the world around us. Monitor and control the use of resources that is optimum utilization of resources is must or required. Monitor, maintain and improve the service and product delivery so that your customer is happy. Secure effective resource allocation for activities and projects. So this will make us have optimum utilization of resources, develop teams, individuals and self to enhance the performance. So here we have to focus on how well we are able to upskill ourselves, upgrade ourselves plan, allocate and evaluate work carried out by the teams and this gives us the right kind of direction and then create, maintain and enhance effective working relationships and finally exchange information to solve problems and to make decisions. So this exchange of information is a critical factor, communication plays a major role in management right time, right communication leads to effective decision making. 
So, here we come on to the summary of this session which is introduction to management which says that we must take into consideration that management is a universal application phenomena which is applied to all kinds of organizations. The reality of work is that you will either manage or be managed. So, the choice is yours, you want to manage or you want to be managed by others and we need to have awareness of significant rewards. These rewards do wonders and magic with the help of these rewards which the organization is in place uh, placing it and finally the rewards are executed as well and are great motivators for the star performers to be retained in the organization. So I hope students you must have gained some insight from this particular session on introduction to management. Thank you.